Hey guys, welcome back to another cooking video thing I do on my channel. First of all, thank you so much for the support on the last video. If you missed it, it's called A Day Without No. It's kind of like a vlog and a life message thing in one. Check it out if you missed it. Anyways, we are making three foods from Breath of the Wild. If you didn't know, Andrew Ray, aka Binging with Babish, is doing a food challenge on Breath of the Wild. The video process is not a part of the giveaway, but I thought you all might enjoy it. Anyways, we are starting off with the meat skewers and therefore a meat marinade, which is going to consist of half a cup of olive oil and half that of Worcester sauce, which is a word that I never know if I'm pronouncing correctly, along with this much soy sauce. It's like three to five tablespoons. I don't know. You want it to basically look like oil and vinegar with a little bit too much vinegar. Quarter juice and drop in one full lemon and two or three cloves of garlic, along with a heaping tablespoon of onion powder, turmeric, paprika, and ground black pepper. To make life easier, you could honestly just use Lowry's seasoned salt and ground black pepper instead. Wish to combine because the oils are not going to want to mix and drop in two pounds of beef sirloin. I cut mine into rectangles, squares, and triforce triangles to see which would grill the best. Speaking of, let's mix, cover, and let this marinate in the fridge for three hours. Unlike chicken, beef actually has natural flavor and we don't want the strong soy sauce to overpower that. Head outside and remove the top grate from a charcoal grill. Dump in your charcoal, pile up your pieces to create a pyramid, douse them in biosafe lighter fluid, and light with a grill lighter. Cover the grill and let the charcoal heat up for 15 minutes or so, and make sure to open any vents so you don't blow up your grill. After 10 minutes, knock the pyramid around to create an even distribution of heat. Place the top grate back on and let the coals heat up for another 5 minutes before giving it a quick scrape down and introducing the sirloin, which has been taken out of the marinade and kebabbed according to shape. You want to hear basically this. Cover and let cook for four minutes per side before letting rest for another three minutes before serving. Hey, y'all want some kebab? I mean, I'll eat the fuck out of hey. it. Hey, is it cooked? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. Shoot boots with the BB gun. Yeah. How's that kebab? Yeah. We Dope. good. That's a good kebab. Very Anyone good. else want a kebab? Yeah. Right, let me grab you a kebab. Yo, you afraid that's gonna be raw? Yeah. If anything, it should be overcooked. No, it's actually pretty, pretty damn good. good. It's pretty damn good. Cook the dog. It's pretty there good. You go. Pretty good. The dog. Pretty good. Pretty good. Glenn, what is this? Beef. Glenn's not doing well. What kind? Wings. Sirloin. Chicken wings. A sirloin marinated. Yo. Yo. What's up? Hey gamer, do you want a kebab? Well done or medium rare? Uh, I'll take the well done. The what? Grab the one on closer to you. Yeah. Bop. Are you filming me? I am. Is it all right with it's you? It's a little cold. It's a little. It's been out for a minute. Hmm. <laughs> now that is a great kebab. All right. Well, now that that's done, we can move on to the energizing honey candy, which is going to be one pound of honey over medium low heat in a saucepan until it begins to boil. Meanwhile, prep a baking sheet with a single line of parchment paper and push it into the edges so it is nice and stiff. Spray down the parchment paper with a healthy amount of cooking spray. I used coconut oil, which kind of gave it a little coconutty taste. So if you have coconut oil around, use that. Once the honey begins to over boil, it will begin to calm down over the remainder of its cooking period. Uh, essentially, you want to get it to 280 degrees Fahrenheit or a nice dark brown color. I didn't have a candy thermometer, so I had to eyeball it. It took me about 10 minutes to get to this point, which is where you're going to dump it out onto your prepared baking sheet, where you will let it cool untouched for at least 30 minutes. Yes. 
spread it on your hands with the same cooking spray and try to form the honey leather taffy stuff into a cohesive ball. It's very, very tough and sticky at this point. So just stretch it around itself as many times as you possibly can until you have a much lighter colored stretchy honey rope thing. Okay. <laughs> it's moving. Oh, it's falling. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. Look at that turn. No. <laughs> Completely cut a knife in cooking spray so you can slice this giant taffy brick honey thing onto uh, whatever shape or size you want. Basically, you have artistic liberty to make this however large or small you want. I cut mine first into thirds, rolled those, and cut each of those into fifths and then did whatever I wanted with those pieces. You can really roll or press this stuff into almost any shape or object, like this snail, or this Triforce, or this TK logo, or just these random scraps. Basically any shape works, um, but I highly recommend dousing it in salt after. Remember, this is pure honey, so it has a very strong, sweet taste, but that salt counteracts it and gives it a nice, salty, sweet flavor. After I finished designing the candies and I never claimed to be a good artist, I took my first bite and the first thing that I noticed was that it is super, super chewy. It does not come out for your teeth. The salt and sweet work really well together and it has a good flavor, but we are moving on to one of the more nostalgic things in the menu. Five hours later and we are now making warm milk, which consists of milk in a mug, microwaved for 45 seconds to bring it to a nice warm temperature, but unfortunately it doesn't taste the way I remember as a kid, so we're going to change it up a bit, and that's nice and convenient because this was actually microwaved for 15 seconds to bring to room temperature and placed into a G Fuel shaker cup. The only reason I'm using this is because I don't have anything else to froth my milk with. If you have a milk frother or cappuccino machine, I recommend you use that, but make sure to use code SANDERS for 0% off your next G Fuel purchase. Shake vigorously for at least 30 seconds or at least until large bubbles form in the container and transfer back into the microwave safe mug and microwave for 45 more seconds until the milk is nice and hot. You should see a little bit of froth forming on the top of the milk and you're going to pour this back into a G Fuel shaker cup and shake it vigorously for 30 more seconds. This is going to cause the milk to froth up and some foam to form so be careful when you're opening the shaker cup it will explode because of all that heat trapped in there. And we use the natural shape of the shaker cup to pour all of the froth milk and keep the foam inside of the cup. We're going to save that for later. To the froth milk, we're going to add two teaspoons of sugar and half a teaspoon each of nutmeg and cinnamon. The spices aren't really going to mix together all that well, so you're going to have to just do as best you can. Along with that, we're going to add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whisk to combine to fully homogenize the spices. Big word. I know it won't fully homogenize, but give it the best you can. Top with the foam and then the remaining half teaspoon of cinnamon. The final result is kind of like a seasonal espresso -less latte thing, but the taste actually surprised me, and actually kind of the lack of it. The ingredients kind of take away from the fact that warm milk just doesn't taste as good as I remember it, and it kind of brings back that nostalgic flavor of milk when you wake up in the morning. I don't know when you guys had your warm milk, but I had mine as soon as I woke up and it was the best in the world. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that it is 4 a.m., which is the best time to have this drink if there ever was one. Uh, I have a really cute dog as some wallpaper, and uh, warm milk is surprisingly reminiscent of the past when made right. Hey guys, as I said, this video is part of a contest for a giveaway hosted by Andrew Ray, aka Binging with Babish. I've talked about him a couple times before on my channel. He makes really, really, really good content. Um, about food in pop culture, in media, and movies, and TV, and whatnot. And he recently started venturing into video games, which is not the niche market that I wanted to corner or anything. So, thank you for that, Andrew. Anyway, um, I definitely recommend you check him out. He has a video just like this where he makes food from Breath of the Wild, as well as a couple of videos where he makes various other foods from various other media sources. Anyways, thanks for sticking around to the end. And now that this video has finally gotten to uh, 9 minutes and 40 seconds, I can throw on a 20 second end screen and you can have an ad. Actually, I'll just give you an ad right now. How about that? 
Alright, I hope you enjoyed the ad. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Bye, guys.